it's Dr. Jan with some wise words to work with. And I want to continue our conversation about documentation. So now you have your documentation, your two to four weeks of information about what is happening to you at work. What do you do with it? You have some choices. You can report if you want to. You can do nothing with it. Or what I think is the most important is, is that you take your documentation and you develop a plan of action to strategize and plan how you can reduce the amount of harm that you're experiencing. So you can do that. You can develop a plan and report at the same time. You don't, those things are not mutually exclusive. Okay, I'm going to put a link in the description box for some information that I have about reporting because there are consequences and you're at risk when you report, but I'll put those in the description box for you. So let's talk about the importance of looking at your documentation and using that as a tool to take back control and manage bully culture. So what you can do is you can take your documentation. First off, you can count up, and I recommend that you do this, and you make a tally of how many times you experienced all the different types of workplace bullying behaviors. How many times were you yelled at? How many times did somebody cut you off or interrupt you in meetings? How many times did you get uh, attacked via email? All of those things are really important and the numbers help you determine what is really happening to you. It allows you to really ex see what is happening to you. Rather than, yes, I'm being cyber bullied, you can now say, I have received 542 emails over the course of three months in that are bully, bullying emails. That makes a difference. It corroborates what you already knew was happening, but it shows it to you in numbers. But take your documentation and find those high risk times. Where are the times that you are being most bullied? Where are you most vulnerable? Let's say, for example, it's in meetings. Meetings are often a cesspool, I've said it before, a cesspool for bullying, and they are high risk times a lot of times if you're a target of workplace bullying. So take that documentation and look, who's doing it, what is being said, what are the actual behaviors that you're experiencing, and what are your reaction, and also what are the reactions of other people around you. So let's say, for example, that in meetings, there's a lot of workplace bullying and your reaction oftentimes to being bullied is defensiveness, okay? Defensiveness often puts you at risk for increased bullying, okay? Because defensiveness is a situation where you're defending what you're doing. And when you do that, the bully immediately um, sees that as an opportunity to continue to bully you. So you can change that. Right? That's an opportunity for you to strategize and develop ways to not get defensive. You can say things like this. Ah, I see, John. I understand what you're saying, and I'll think about that. Mm, that's an interesting point. You can develop neutral, <laughs> neutral responses, which will decrease your defensiveness. Right? What about if it's at the coffee pot, right? And you go in the morning, people are there, you hear them gossiping, or they're... Um, turning their backs on you, those are opportunities for them to bully you. Don't go get coffee there. Bring your own coffee, okay? Or don't drink coffee, which I don't recommend that because I love coffee. But there are lots of opportunities when you look at that docu documentation, excuse me, of ways that you can better manage bully culture. And then finally also, look to see in that documentation, is there anybody that you think you could develop as a strategic ally, a supportive ally that the two of you could work together, okay? I'll talk about later how you can develop that relationship because you wanna make sure that you have an ally that's on your side and that isn't going to bully you or go to tell the bully what's happening. You might make sure that you have a trusting relationship with that. But that documentation is really very important. And the other thing I'm going to say is that if you decide to report the workplace bully to your supervisor, it is important that you have all of the numbers tallied so that you can, when you're talking to your supervisor, 
you can tell them the exact amount of times you've received emails. How many times approximately have people um, made nonverbals? How many times did they yell at you? All of those things when you can say it was 352 times makes a difference when you say I was yelled at several times okay and so having those numbers makes a difference and the other thing too is when you go if you're going to report and you're going to bring in your documentation that documentation is painting a picture so you have to show them the whole documentation don't talk about the last incident okay you're talking about workplace bullying which is um, all of those incidences of aggressive and be bullying behavior. It's not just the last one. And so that documentation and having that will help you put the puzzle pieces together for your supervisor.